Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SwahiliPod101.com. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Shukran kwa kuungana na mimi katika kipindi hii. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Thank you for joining me. In this series, you're going to learn basic Swahili expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. And in this first lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swahili. You learn both an informal and formal way to do it. But unlike many other languages, there is not a very big difference between informal and formal speech in Swahili. First, let's see how Kenyan people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hi, I'm Medina. Nice to meet you. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Let's break it down. Start with the greeting. Habari, then mimi ni, which is followed by your name. Next, say the phrase, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. All together, it is, Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And now, let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hello, my name is Medina Maraka. Nice to meet you. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at these together. It's important to note that habari can be used in both casual and formal settings. However, it is more formal and respectful to use the word shikamo, especially when addressing an older person. Shikamo implies good day or simply hello. You will notice that the section mimi ni for I am changes to jinalangu ni medina for my name is Medina. During a formal self-introduction, it is advisable to mention your last name. So, I will say, my name is Medina Maraka. Here, you will say your full name. Finally, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe is the same for both. This phrase means, nice to meet you. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Swahili is, habari. Mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And the formal way to introduce yourself is Shikamo. Jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When introducing yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Usually, the right hand is slightly supported by the left hand. If you're concerned about politeness, a slight bend forward while shaking the hand adds a sign of respect in the Kenyan business world. However, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Kenya, simplicity is best. Do you know how to say thank you in Swahili? You learn how to say this and many other words in the next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Thanks for dropping by and see you next time. Kwa heri, tuanane tena. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anamuuliza muuzaji jambo katika duka la vitabu. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Samahani, ningelipenda kutazama kitabu katika rafu ile ya vitabu. 
Ni kitabu kipi unachokitaka? Kile cha magari. Ngoja kidogo tafadhali. Hiki? Ndiyo. Hiki hapa. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Mwanamke anamuuliza muuzaji jambo katika duka la vitabu. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Samahani, ningelipenda kutazama kitabu katika rafu ile ya vitabu. Ni kitabu kipi unachokitaka? Kile cha magari. Ngoja kidogo tafadhali. Hiki? Ndiyo. Hiki hapa. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Siku kuu ya mwaka mpya inasherehekewa mnamo tarehe moja Januari kila mwaka. Hii ni siku ambayo watu wengi utazama maisha yao ya mwaka uliopita na kutaka kubadilisha mazimio yao na kuwa na mtazamo mpya wa maisha. Funzo hili litatuangazia jinsi watu hujiburudisha pamoja na jamaa na marafiki. Je, ni wakati upi ambao watu wengi hupata muda wa kubadilisha mielekeo ya maisha yao? Ni wakati gani wa mwaka wazazi wengi huwanunulia watoto wao zawadi mpya? Tutaonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni wa video hii. Watu hungoja siku kuu ya mwaka mpya kwa shauku kuu. Waamini huenda kanisani na kukesha huku wakingoja saa sita ya usiku kuwasili. Watu wengine huona heri kwenda kwa makao ya burudani na kujistaherehesha kwa kuimba na kupiga miziki. Saa sita ya usiku ikifika wao hupiga nduru, kurusha miele ya moto na kukaribisha mwaka mpya kwa hoi hoi na nderemo. Watu hutuma ujumbe mfupi kwa jamaa na marafiki na kuukaribisha mwaka mpya. Walio katika mahali pa ibada huomba na kumshukuru Mungu. Asubuhi ifikapo, watu huanza kutayarisha mlo wa kipekee pamoja na vinywaji. Wao huwalika wageni na kuwapa burudani mrwa kabisa. Watu wengine hupendelea kuchinja mbuzi na kupika chakula kama chapati, mkimo, pilao na vitoweo vya aina mbalimbali. Vinywaji hupatikana kwa wingi nazo ni kama soda, maji ya matunda, pombe na vileo tofauti. Masaya ala siri, watu wanapomaliza kula na kunywa wao huvalia mavazi mapya yanayopendeza na kuenda mahala pa kujistarehesha. Kwa mfano, wanaweza kwenda kuona wanyama wa pori ama kuogelea huko pwani. Siku kuu kama hii hufanya utalii wa kinyumbani kufana sana. Siku hii watu hufanya matendo ya kutia fora kwa sababu wana imani ya kwamba wakiwa wazuri mwanzoni mwaka wao utakuwa wenye fanaka. Wao huanza na nia mpya. Na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali. Je, ni wakati upi ambao watu wengi hupata muda wa kubadilisha mielekeo ya maisha yao? Ni wakati upi wa mwaka wazazi wengi huwanunulia watoto wao zawadi mpya? Watu wengi huchukulia siku hii kama wakati wa kwanza minendo mapya. Wazazi pia hutaka kuwafurahisha wanao wa wapendao kwa zawadi tofauti. Funzo hili lilikuwaje? Je, ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, nyinyi husherekea siku kuu ya mwaka mpya kama wa Kenya? Tuachie maoni yako katika swahili podwano1.com kisha tunane katika somo lifuatalo. Kwa heri everyone, do you know how to say I love you in Swahili? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Nakupenda. 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 Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say Nimekupenda. Nimekupenda. Nime 
nimekupenda. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say Maneno hayawezi kueleza upendo wangu kwako. Maneno hayawezi kueleza upendo wangu kwako. Maneno hayawezi kueleza upendo wangu kwako. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners when we thank people. Are you ready? Let's get started. There are several ways to thank someone, but let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Asante. Asante. As you may have guessed, Asante means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add the word sana. Asante sana. Asante sana. Sana means a lot. So, Asante sana is just like saying thank you very much. In the last lesson, we talked about the informal and formal ways of speaking Swahili. But Asante will work in both situations. So, there's no need to worry. So how do you reply to thank you in Swahili? It's easy. There are two ways of doing it. The main way is to say karibu. This means you're welcome. Karibu. Literally, this phrase means welcome. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression kamwe. Kamwe. Literally, this phrase means not at all or never mind. You use this when you think that there's no need to be thanked. So it's like saying, don't mention it. So when someone says asante to you, you can simply reply with karibu or kamwe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use asante or asante sana, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Asante can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. Do you know what habari means? In our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu lesson, you learn this and other greetings in Swahili. Tuonane! How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanatazama orodha ya chakula hotelini. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Utaagiza nini? Pizza linaonekana tamu. Nadhani nitaliagiza. Nilikula pizza jana kwa hivyo. Sawa. Hamburger J. Chaguo bora. Nitakiagiza. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanatazama orodha ya chakula hotelini. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Utaagiza nini? Pizza linaonekana tamu. Nadhani nitaliagiza. Nilikula pizza jana kwa hivyo. Sawa. Hamburger J. Chaguo bora. Nitakiagiza. Mwanamume anatafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibie katika duka la shaufu. Atanunua dani gani? Naweza kukusaidia? Natafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibi yangu. Unasifia gani? Nam, unaonaje dani hili hapa? Hmm. Linafanana ndefu kidogo. Na hivi hapa kuna moja na shamili la ua na moja lina roho. Natafuta kitu kilichosifika. Dani hili la lulu ni bei ngapi? Ni shilingi elf mia tatu. Hmm. Hilo ni bei gali sana. Nitachukua cha kwanza. Sawa, hapa upo. 
Atanunua dani gani? Mwanamume anatafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibie katika duka la shaufu. Atanunua dani gani? Naweza kukusaidia? Natafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibi yangu. Unasifia gani? Nam, unaonaje dani hili hapa? Hmm. Linafanana ndefu kidogo. Na hivi hapa kuna moja na shamili la ua na moja lina roho. Natafuta kitu kilichosifika. Dani hili la lulu ni bei ngapi? Ni shilingi elf mia tatu. Hmm, hilo ni bei gali sana. Nitachukua cha kwanza. Sawa, hapa upo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Swahili. Do you remember habari as an informal way of greeting someone? And shikamo, the formal version? In this lesson, you're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Swahili, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Unaongea Kiingereza? Unaongea Kiingereza? In Swahili, we sometimes use a one-word phrase that combines the subject and its verb. Unongea is a good example. Breaking this phrase down further, we have u, which is a pronoun for the subject. Na shows the subject's potential of doing an action. It makes the statement affirmative. Ongea is the verb for speak. Together, we have unongea, which literally means you speak. Saying it with a higher intonation makes it a question. So, unongea means do you speak? Adding kingereza, the word for English, will make it unongea kingereza. This means, do you speak English? All together we have unongea kingereza. Unongea kingereza. To learn how to properly construct one word sentences, check out our obsolete beginner series at swahilipod101.com. There, you'll find several detailed grammar lessons. We are now going to make this sentence formal. It isn't hard. First, add the word J at the beginning of the sentence. J is a word that prompts a question. The sentence, unaongea, will change to J, unaweza ongea. Not the extra word weza, which means able. J, unaweza ongea, therefore means, are you able to? Let's look at the full sentence. J, unaweza ongea, kingereza. Do you speak English? J, unaweza ongea kingereza? Adding samahani, which means excuse me, makes the sentence even more polite. Samahani, unaweza ongea kingereza? The responses you'll receive could be one of these three. Ndiyo. Yes. Ndiyo. Kidogo. A little. Kidogo. La, siongei kingereza? No. I don't speak English. La, siongei kingereza. Since la siongei kingereza is a negative statement, we need to say la first, followed by si before the verb, and an e at the end of the verb. Also note that the verb ongei is slightly different from ongea. This is because negating in Swahili depends on the pronoun and the tense. In this example, the first person prefix si is used before the verb, and the suffix e is used at the end of the verb. As you can see, negation in Swahili follows a particular pattern. Some negations, though, require the word no, but we will talk about this in a later lesson. Now it's time for Medina's insights. For those of you who speak languages other than English, this question still works. Just substitute Kingereza with a different language. Here are some examples. Kitalia is Italian. Kirusi is Russian, Kispania is Spanish, and Kijerumani is German. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression samahani, 
But did you know that this can also be used as an apology? We'll be learning this in the next lesson, as well as other ways to apologize in Swahili. It's never too late to show your good manners to Kenyans. So, I'll see you in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. See you next time. Kwaheri, tunane tena. Do you know how to say thank you in Swahili? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with the easiest one. Asante. Asante. Another way to say thank you is Nashkuru. Nashkuru. Finally, here's a third way to express your gratitude. Asanteni. Asanteni. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Asante. Asante. Nashkuru. Nashkuru. Asanteni. Asanteni. Well done! You just learned three different ways to say thank you in Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, Unaweza ongea kingereza? Do you speak English? We also mentioned the word samahani, which means excuse me in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use samahani and other words when apologizing in Swahili. We should use samahani in formal situations, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, Samahani, naweza giza kikombe cha kahawa. Excuse me, would I order a cup of coffee? We can also use it when asking a question. For example, Samahani, Mombasa iko wapi? Excuse me, where is Mombasa? Sometimes, we also hear people say just Samahani because it can also be used to draw someone's attention. Samahani. Samahani can be used in formal and informal situations. We can use samahani when asking a question or when apologizing. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I am sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is niwi eradi. It means pardon me and can be used in both formal and informal situations. Niwi eradi. First, we have the Swahili word niwi, which means a consideration. Then, radhi, meaning pardon. Together, it literally means consider a pardon. But you can think of it like, pardon me. Niwie radhi. Niwie radhi. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Please, remember when you're in Kenya, if you accidentally bump into someone, it's more common to say samahani than niwie radhi. Are you able to count in Swahili? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Swahili from 1 to 10. I'll be waiting for you in our next Swahili kwa dakika tatu lesson. Tuonane! How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwana mme anaongea na bibi yake katika simu. Anaenda kununua nini? Eti naelekea nyumbani sasa. Sawa. Unaweza kununua kitu kwa njia yako nyumbani? Ndivyo. Ungelipenda ninunue nini? Tunahitaji maziwa na mkate ya kiamsha kinywa ya kesho. Maziwa na mkate nimezipata. Paketi ngapi za maziwa? Moja itatosha. Sawa. Jambo lingine lolote? Sekunde. Wacha niangalie kama tunasiagi. Ndio, tunao. Ndivyo, tuna pombe yoyote iliyobaki. Ndio. Tunachupa kidogo hapa. Vyema. Hatuhitaji kununua yeyote sasa hivi. 
sawa sawa nadhania tuko sawa asante anaenda kununua nini Mwanamume anaongea na bibi yake katika simu. Anaenda kununua nini? Eti naelekea nyumbani sasa. Sawa. Unaweza kununua kitu kwa njia yako nyumbani? Ndivyo. Ungelipenda ninunue nini? Tunahitaji maziwa na mkate ya kiamsha kinywa ya kesho. Maziwa na mkate nimezipata. Paketi ngapi za maziwa? Moja itatosha. Sawa. Jambo lingine lolote? Sekunde. Wacha niangalie kama tuna siagi. Ndio, tunao. Ndivyo, tuna pombe yoyote iliyobaki. Ndio. Tuna chupa kidogo hapa. Vyema. Hatuhitaji kununua yeyote sasa hivi. Sawa sawa. Nadhania tuko sawa. Asante. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time.